Kentucky has paid $425,000 so far to settle lawsuits by two former social workers, and lawsuits by three other social workers are pending. Tonight, we continue our investigation of Kentucky's Child Protective Services with a different perspective on what's going on. John Bolt joins us with this Target 32 exclusive. Thank you, Rick. We've been doing these stories for three years now. Abuse of power, falsified documents, lies in court, threats, and retaliation against parents who fight back. We've heard from victims, attorneys, and officials about what's going on, but we haven't heard from the social workers themselves until now. In disturbing detail, they back up many of the things we've reported, that families are harassed and workers are pressured, all in an effort to boost adoption numbers. Because you would not ignore a half dozen allegations of abuse in this foster home, a state social worker was fired. I did, but I felt like I had to do. It was the right thing to do, and I stand by the complaint. Because Pat Moore of Ellesmere, Kentucky, knew she was right, she filed a lawsuit. And last month, the state paid her $380,000 to settle it. When she found that two foster parents had criminal records, a son living there with multiple felonies, and a convicted sex offender visiting and sometimes caring for the children, she refused to arrange an adoption. Her CPS supervisors responded with this memo recommending the adoption should proceed quickly. Our theory is that the basis for this is the, the tie to the federal money. That every time a child is not placed in a home, the state of Kentucky, through its cabinet, is losing federal money. It's an allegation we've seen many times in our three-year-long investigation of Kentucky CPS that instead of trying to bring families together, the cabinet forces adoptions to earn more federal bonus money. And it apparently started in 2004 when adoptions in Kentucky ballooned to 724 while the federal bonus money more than doubled from 452000 the year before to more than a million. Statistics. The cabinet puts pressure on statistics because federal money and state money come from statistics. This former state social worker is so afraid of retaliation on her family by the cabinet, she asked us to conceal her identity. You get praised. The cabinet praises you for terminating rights and adopting the kids out immediately. She says the concerted effort to take children away and put them up for adoption was so brazen, she actually saw someone successfully place an order for children. Someone could not have a child and wanted a child, so within the community, this certain person saw a family that was in distress, was having a hard time, and relayed to workers that they would like those children. And that's exactly what has happened. And this former CPS supervisor, who also fears retaliation, says if an order for a child was delayed or denied, her supervisors would roll in and try to overturn local decisions. This one family was promised a child. And when it happened that the child was going to be reunified with the parent, um, they called our regional office. Our regional office uh, came down on, on our county. They uh, harassed the birth parents and that kind of thing because they didn't agree with our decision. So I didn't get to say bye. And remember the case of Vanessa Shanks, who had her kids taken away, and when she fought back, saw her relative's kids taken away, and when she won her appeal, saw her attorney's child taken away. These former CPS workers say that kind of retaliatory power is common. And in this secretive one-side system, they can take your kids away right now if they want to and get away with it. I can call in and report tomorrow, and I can make it seem very real to the point that a family will be investigated. And whoever gets it could come up with a substantiation of, say, let's say, neglect. And it might not be true. But it, it doesn't matter. Now, according to data just released a couple of days ago, there is a huge disparity between counties on adoption rates. Some counties reunify with the family 100% of the children they've taken away. Others, last year, adopted out as high as 82% of the children they removed from the home. If you want to look at the stats and more, we have a link to the Child Welfare Report on the homepage of our website, WLKY.com. The Commissioner of CPS will talk to me, respond to our investigation tomorrow. We'll have